Hey everyone, so I'm not Rajen like you already know. I threw I just threw down this teal on this black panel here. And now I'm gonna just do a video of me doing the second color. But first I want to talk about the first color. So usually my first color I like to leave open enough so I can fit a second color in there. Sometimes you can leave it a little bit more open if you're a beginner. Um because it gets really tight in here with the teal. I might have to break it up a little bit, but you'll see that when I'm painting. Okay, so I work most of the time upright as much as I can because you can develop neck problems, pinch nerves in your neck, which is why I am working upright now because I had a pinch nerve about four years ago and now I have another one which I'm like just recovering from. So try to work upright as much as you can to save your neck because you know you'll get jobs both upright and flat but if you can work upright I say do that alright so I'm gonna be off camera for a minute I'm gonna be loading my brush up with my next color which I chose a magenta by one shot I'm gonna thin a little bit with high temp reducer and I'm using a King 13 size triple zero by Mac brush and I'm getting get my brush ready and I usually do all my designs freehand so you can see me going through the, the thought process in a minute here all right so my second color ready it's magenta I'm thinking about it. Now this is all wet right now so if I touch it it's gonna smear. I usually always work wet on wet so I brace my left hand with my right hand. I usually extend both pinkies and I put my thumb underneath this thumb and it just helps support. So I'm gonna put my one pinky through here Drag down. I'm going to stop that right there. Might come back to that, add to it a little later. Who knows what I'm going to do? Second line. This brush is old and losing hair. So make sure before you plant your brush down that you don't have a stray hair sticking out. I'm going to lift up. I usually try to palette between every stroke, not so much on the straights, but let's say we're going to be doing a curve in a minute, probably. I'm going to go attach this, roll the brush. Now I'm able to roll that like that because I hold this hand, I hold the handle. I'm allowed to freely roll that. If I was holding here, I have like a, a corner, a flat spot on that wrap, so I'm going to be bump, bump, no matter which way I roll it. And same thing with the right handers. If you're holding down here, you can roll until you hit the bump, bump, bump. But if you hold here, you have free range, no matter which hand you hold your brush in. To hold here is good for doing long straight lines. But if you want to get into curves and tight turns, rolling the handle is beneficial. And especially when you go into lettering, you're going to need to be able to roll the brush in your fingers like that. So that's why I hold the brush like that. All right. So I'm going to let those guys hang out there for a moment while I'm thinking about what I'm going to do down there. All right, I think I figured something out there. So I'm going to take him and go this way. A 
little brush. I'm going to stop before I get to the next line. I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to make a guide point right there. I just dash it there. And that's going to be my landing zone. And I think about negative space between these two curves. Start rolling more and more and more and more and more. And then lift up. Now these you can come back and clean up. You can flip your brush upside down to do that. You can just do it the fussy way like I do. Now like I said, I repal it because if you're pulling a line like this, your hairs are going to be all bound up. So if you don't repal it and you try to curve the other way, all your hairs are still in that bound up way when you were twisting the brush. So that's why I repal it between every stroke usually. It just opens your hairs back up and puts them in the position they're supposed to be in. Alright, so now I'm thinking about what I want to do now. And I'm going to go up here. I like to try to cross my lines at a good, decent angle. I don't want like a shallow angle crossing the lines. Now that line wasn't that curved, so I'm going to come back up here before I repal it. Just do that. Bring this guy back here. And usually when I end, I might just hang out for a while and let the paint distribute to the end of the tip instead of lifting up right away. Really tight turn. Now the other side I might not be able to do that in one stroke because this side I, I'll i have cert certain curves going certain ways will be harder for you to do than other curves going certain ways. And I know this one's one of my my weaker curves on this side of the board. So I might do this in two stroke which two strokes, which is fine. Go slow, and I'm only really using the very, very, very tip. Repal it. If you do have to do that in two strokes, just try to meet your lines nicely.
And when you're working on a board like this, when you're working upright, you have the ability to take a step back and observe your balance on your design. Because if I was working flat over a table, I only have the distance where I'm sitting and looking down. Whereas when you're working upright like this, you can take a step back and really watch your work. Now I'm starting to curve. Right a little bit before I got to the center there, I already started to curve to go down. You gotta set yourself up. Cause if I started to curve here, cause if I started to curve down here, then my reaction of that would start benefiting me right here. And then my line would look like this. It would go up higher and then lower. Deciding what I want to do here. I'm going to stop there and regroup so I can see. Pause, I'll be right back. Okay. I have to go get a drink real fast. Okay, where do I want to go? See, I build up here. I need a little bit more pink in this section. This is how I think about design. Think about the flow of the colors together. So I might leave this area alone right now and play around with this area and then come back up there.
I kind of went out when I was coming back in there. So, Wipeout Tool by MAC. It's handy dandy. All right, so I'm looking and I'm looking. And I have a lot of things pointing down here. And these guys are pointing up, so I'm just going to come in and go up here. Now crossing over horizontal like that is very tricky. I was horrible at it for a long time. And that's another thing about working upright is that you can level your head and look. Because sometimes when, when you're going like this, you might get cockeyed because you're not looking directly parallel to your center line there. So if you look like this, you can see it better. And you can take a step back and really analyze your negative space when you're doing that. So I know these are going to be filled, that center is going to be filled, these are going to be filled, and also this is going to be filled. All that is going to be filled. If that wasn't going to be filled, I'd be running pink down there somewhere in the design so it's more uniform. So I still have this area that I feel like I need a little bit more pink in. So just to look at it for a moment. And I know this area is not going to be filled in. But I'm going to use the third color. And I kind of got to leave that room. And third color is going to be a lot of this. And I know that. So I might just put a rectangle there. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush out and probably set up my fill color just so I have a visual idea of where all my color is going to be and then I'll go to the, like, the fourth color actually to do all the little crossovers. So stay tuned. Okay, so my fill color, I mixed up an orange with magenta and chrome yellow by one shot. And I'm going to use the same brush to do all the fill in work that I did all the line work with. I'm palletting right now. I usually palette pretty heavy when I'm doing my fills. Alright, now everything's still wet. I'm doing this all in real time. I only stopped to take a drink and uh, clean my brush out from one color to the next. Alright, so make sure you don't have any hairs coming out. I said this is an old brush. Well, old for me. And just run the on the inside of my teal line that I put down. Sometimes I do this in one pull, sometimes I do it in two. This one's going to be two. I'm going to repalette, make sure I have enough paint on my brush. Be mindful of where your fingers are. I know my left 
pinky's gonna have to come up so I don't run it into paint. So I'm still bracing with my right hand. Okay. Now these triangle bits. They usually take more to fill in because you have that angle there. This right here. I'm looking at now. Now I might fill these these up. Oh, same brush hair. Was coming out. Now I have orange paint over there. I'll show you how to fix that. You can wait for that to dry or you can fix it now. I'll show you how I would do it now. But I'm going to do all my little color work right here with this first. Okay, now this is a big fill down here. So I'm using more of the side of the brush to do that. I'm going to roll it back the center. Straighten out more and more and more. Now the colors I chose with this panel, I'm going, it's a black panel, and I'm going from least contrasting to most contrasting color. Because if I put the pink down first and then I put the teal down, the pink would look like it's broken lines. It's a, uh, it fools your eyes around. Alright, so now I know I'm definitely going to go up here and color those two in also. Because I think I would like the way that looks. And I'm pretty sure these are going to be my last fills. one on the teal, which I can touch that up with the teal. Alright, so I'm thinking that's off to the orange. Clean my brush out. Let it hang in the mineral spirits for a moment while I clean that little orange thing right there like I sh said I would. So this is the matte wipeout tool. It's got like a rubber, rubber end. We have like a point and then like a little chisel edge right there. Sometimes you can just use the rubber, sometimes I wrap it in a towel and I push it towards the blue line. You don't really necessarily want to touch the blue line, but you can always touch the blue line back up. 
And now I'm just going to use the tip and push, wipe the tip, push, wipe the tip, push, wipe the tip. There you go. Okay, now third color, third color I might do lime green because I love lime green. So I'm going to pause it and get my lime green mixed up and start doing the third color. Well, fourth color. Okay, so I have my lime green mixed up, which I use one shot sublime green, which right out of the, the can or bottle, it's a little too yellow on the yellow side for me. So this time, because I'm working with teal, I added just a little bit of teal into the green and I darkened that up just a little bit, but it's still going to read as lime green because I'm putting it on a dark surface so it'll really make it still look bright. Okay. So this, this work is all going to be pretty tight. I kind of want to stay in the confines of the, the pink. I don't want to go extend past the pink or past the teal. This is how I usually work. Um, I like to bring my brighter colors in tight so your eye all goes inside the center there. Okay, so in here, I'm going to do one of these. Now after I do the green, I'm most likely going to go back in the orange and cover where I painted the green. And I could have waited to uh, paint the orange in, but I really wanted to visually see how much orange there would be so I can balance it out see if I needed to add it anywhere or, or not. So sometimes I work forwards and then go in reverse, but that's okay. I can be very picky about how I do things. Now all these colors are still wet, so you don't really want to thin down your paint too much because too much thinners and the more times you go over a, a wet color, chances are you're going to pull that, that paint up to your color that you're putting over it. So try to, try to keep your passes over a color limited. Now I noticed I'm a little low on this side and high on this side. So I'm going to thicken this up. I'm going to go higher here, go to center here, go from here, bring it down just a little bit. And you can have thick and thin lines in your design, just be consistent with them. So now that that line's thicker, I might throw in another thicker cross line. If you look at some other artists' work, they work with uh, thick and thins a lot. knuckle into wet paint. And also um, the oils from your face, from your skin, they work as a really, really great paint remover.
just keep that in mind. But you can't really paint over that because that's like oil. So as I'm paletting, I'm also looking at my design, trying to figure out where I want to go with my green. I think I figured it out. It's going to be a tricky, tricky one, but it should be cool. So I'm going to go. Stop right about there. I'm gonna come back in. big negative space open right there and everything's pretty tight sometimes I keep my designs open more than this sometimes I like it keep it nice and tight and busy you know um learn how to do both so there's going to be clients that like both A lot of times when you're working on some vehicles, they don't want a busy design, they just want something elegant, something tasteful, just accent it. And this is why I usually go crazy on my panels, because I don't get a chance to do that on my vehicle work. So this I'm going to go up and over. I'm probably going to start from the center here. Now I usually work with all my lines closed, so I don't have just like one random line. Um, like if this came down and just stopped there and didn't go back up into something, I usually work where all my lines do go back into something. If I don't, if I just leave it, like if that line just stopped there and didn't go back up in there, I end it with a dot or a spear or something. Um, that way it looks kind of intentional and, and designing like that really makes you think about the design as a whole instead of just throwing lines just to fill in some areas like it really makes you process your design more. So since I know I'm going to cover the orange there, I'm not going to go across the orange with that green there. Thinking. Sometimes you get stuck, and that's okay. We all do it.
Not initially what I sent out to do, but it works. So just go for it. Yeah, I'm going to connect those. Okay, so that's it with the green.